Cameron Black, owner operator of Gone Catching Guide Service. I've been a fishing guide here locally in the Southwest Washington area for the last 20 years. I reside in Woodland with my wife and two kids who hopefully one day are gonna grow up to be fishing guides as well. One of my other uh, great hobbies that I have is I'm also part of the Addictive Fishing Group and we've got a shop located in Ridgefield, Washington and we put out tons of content online to help new and aspiring anglers to come out and basically learn how to catch fish and be part of this uh, great thing that we got going in the Southwest Washington. Hey Cameron. How's it going again? Great to see you. Thanks for coming out. Let's Let's do it. Grab a seat. Yes. Cameron, how do federal regulations impact fisheries? So coming from the federal government, you know, whether it be NOAA, NIMS, or some of these other agencies that manage them, they always set a, a group of parameters and the states have to manage it with inside this box. So the way federal regulations can really impact fisheries is what we're seeing in the sea lion problem. Because, you know, over the last 30, 40 years with sea lion populations just booming, I mean, they were endangered, ESA came in, we, we bolstered those populations and we've made them what they are today, which is honestly like quite a recovery. Unfortunately, now those regulations basically not allowing the state agencies to touch them, to do anything with them, um, we have a huge problem. They've wrecked sturgeon populations. They're, they're killing vast amount of our endangered wild Chinook, our wild steelhead. There's been many examples where um, we've seen some slight removal of uh, sea mammal populations, for instance, at Willamette Falls when it comes to wild winter steelhead, that just the removal of just a very few of these predators can bolster a wild steelhead population uh, to where we're seeing record setting numbers coming over. So if we could just get some of that red tape released off of those sea mammals, um, to let the states be able to like, kind of do their job and probably what needs to be done, uh, we would see dramatic impacts to our sport fishing. What are some practical solutions to the sea lion problem? Unfortunately, we've done such a great job of actually bringing those populations back over the last 30, 40 years with ESA protections and whatnot that we've bolstered them so big that I think the only practical solution that we're going to have for a long-term fix is unfortunately the removal. There are some estuaries in Oregon that actually have higher paid sea lion patrol guys that push the sea lions away from the fisheries and away from some of these other fish populations just to allow like the fish basically to get up river and to get into a little bit of a safer zone. Unfortunately, with the Columbia River, we see these populations of mammals go all the way up through Bonneville Dam um, to chase these salmons. And not to mention how much these, uh, these, sea, uh, these sea lions have been killing our sturgeon populations. How does the salmon run affect local businesses? There's not a person in Southwest Washington that is not tied somehow to these salmon runs. Everybody has an aunt, an uncle, a grandpa, a son, a daughter that is enjoying and participating in these fishings. And so when we have a fish swimming up the Columbia River here, there is no greater value associated to that fish than one that is caught in a sport fishing boat, period. And the way that works is we have sport fishermen that launch in this marina and everywhere across the board whenever these salmon are running. And they're spending money and they're spending gas and they're traveling people. I have clients coming in from Pennsylvania, from Texas this year, from New York, all sorts of places just to come to Southwest Washington to, to have the opportunity to catch a you know, fall Chinook salmon, for instance. What can Congress do to help support the fishing industry? So our Congress really is gonna be able to help our local like Southwest Washington fisheries, but everything along the Columbia River is just to fund our hatcheries. Like whether the wild fish lobby wants to believe it or not and whether um, some of these people that want to get associated with feel good politicking want to believe it or not. Like we all live in the Northwest and we have all taken away from the salmon habitat. We have hydroelectric dams. We have predator issues, up, you know, com complete. <sighs> we have predator issues that are a complete problem with birds. We have sea mammals. We have lots of predatory fish in the Columbia River that we're just not managing. And right now, until we have the ability to fix those problems, if we do not support and fund our hatchery system, those salmon and steelhead will be gone. How would the RAINS Act have affected fishing in Washington? So I think the RAINS Act, if enacted properly in Washington, is gonna allow like stuff that happens in the Northwest be Northwest centric. What has Marie Perez done to support local fisheries and hatcheries? I mean, I'm usually pretty in tune to like kind of what's been going on. I try to pay attention to it. It's my livelihood for the last 20 years. My, you know, basically these fisheries support my family and what we do. and. And um, other than a couple, a couple uh, sightseeing boat tours, I haven't really, unfortunately, seen much. Thank you so much, Cameron. I really appreciate it. Dude, thanks for the support and thanks for paying attention to some of this stuff. Absolutely. Awesome. Take care. The fishing industry is overregulated by the federal government. 
It's top down and bureaucratic, and it's time for that to change. I will fight to repeal unnecessary regulatory burdens and implement solutions, like providing bounties to sea lion hunters and requiring local oversight over salmon fishing. Marie Perez has consistently supported over government regulation. She voted against policies like the RAINS Act. Marie voted to give more power to unelected federal bureaucrats, hurting our fishing industries and our local businesses. The federal government's refusal to take serious steps to fight the invasion of sea lions further up the Columbia, Cowlitz, and Chehalis rivers has both devastated our local fishing industry and harmed the survival of our salmon. Thank you to Cameron Black for sitting down with me today to discuss our fisheries. And thank you for watching this episode of Get Local with Joe, a series where I talk to people in our community about our local issues. You can support my campaign at joekentforcongress.com.